This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Med Canadian Barbecue Company. Med Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasonings such as the Brits Blend, the Cajun, the Savory, the S&P Bud, and the Four Horsemen. Can't go wrong with any of those great seasonings over at the MedCanadianBBQ.com. While you're there, be sure to use that promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. And if you can't get enough of Mad Canadian, be sure to check out his social media to figure out where him and his food truck are heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloop Guest also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch roast to order veteran owned coffee company where all of the beans are hand roasted fair trade certified usda organic fresh roast to order i all all in one breath you guys i got it oh they're local i forgot local they're uh in perrysburg ohio which is just outside of toledo um they have gift cards available. They have subscribe and save service available. You get free shipping if you uh, spend $50 or more. And it's not just the coffee. They also have like coffee canisters and a French press and stoneware, although the stoneware comes out in limited quantities. So if you see one of those and you like it, you better buy it. You better buy it quickly. But this is an integrity based coffee company. Uh, and the integrity comes through in the flavor of the beans. They do everything right. They do everything morally right. And it comes through in the flavor of the coffee. It's not just about bragging rights. It also helps the coffee. So you can find a bunch of amazing coffees and accessories and other merchandise over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. going on youtube what's going on sloop cats in our discord that's right sloop cats in the discord yeah if you those that are listening and want to participate in the live chat that you can see in the uh, youtube hit us up in the discord only as low as three dollars a month the discord is free but there is a premium section for as little as three dollars a month Yes. All right. That's enough plug plug there. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and uh, start the episode here. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloop Guest. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well here today, Jared. It is we are recording Saturday evening, a little bit earlier than we than we usually do but doing all right how are you this fine evening good sir uh yeah that's right we're recording on a saturday night so um if anything happens uh during the course of sunday from a breaking news standpoint bad news we aren't going to be aware of it sorry good news is i'm drinking so it might it might <laughs> lead to a fun episode is all i'm saying you know, you get to you record at night. I get to do all the editing and not that there's a ton of editing, especially from a video standpoint, but I get to just do all the post work um, later. So that means I can drink now. How can you go wrong? Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, there are a few ways it goes wrong. That's enough chit chat, though, Kyle. We have actual football to talk about. Uh, we have actual uh, I almost said spring camp, fall camp football to talk about. We have black stripes to talk about. We have position battles to talk about. Uh, position switches to talk about. Uh, freshmen to talk about. And injuries. And then that's just the first half of the show. The second half of the show, we're going to revisit conference alignment. What? What? A, this is too much. It's too much for an episode, Kyle. So we need to get started. All right. All right. Fall camp. Our favorite thing we'd love to talk about every year, other than uh, other than alternate jerseys and black stripes. Mm -hmm. And and that's what we're going to talk about is the black stripes. Black stripes. Yeah. I I was I was thinking of gray sleeves, but black stripes just came out of my came out of my mouth there. (laughs) All right. um, So let's go ahead and start it off. Um, We have four this this week. I was I was actually anticipating a little bit 
a little bit more this week, but we have four black stripes to talk about. First one, quarterback, Kyle McCord. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about Kyle McCord a bit more when we start talking about like position battles and all of that, but uh, he's been incredibly impressive. Uh, he came in in the spring. Uh, so he is uh, the latest uh, spring enrollee to lose his black stripe. Mm hmm. And then next up here, our favorite punter from down under, Jesse uh, excuse, Micro. Excuse me? Is he already past Cam Johnston in your mind? Because no. Our current, our current, current favorite. Current. <laughs> Thank you. Our current favorite punter from down under. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jesse Micro. Is it Micro? Is it Mirko? Mirko? I have here, it is Mirko. I typed it wrong. My bad. It is Mirko. Thank you. That's what I go for not spell checking. <laughs> JC Mirko. <laughs> well, the spell check actually could have screw screwed you on that one. You could have yes. typed. Anyway, uh, yep. JT Tui Molau has also shed his black stripe. Um, shocked. I, I, shocked. Shocked. Shocking. Um, now, Kyle, is it, I think, correct me if I'm wrong. This is the first of the fall enrollees to shed the black stripe. Or was Mirko, was Mirko a fall enrollee? Do punters even count? That's right. I said it. Deal with it. I don't know. I, I, I asked know. if punters even counted. I said it. I don't apologize for it. Deal with it. I love you, punters. <laughs> I love you, punters. And also joining Saturday um, with JT Tui Malau. Evan Pryor. says he thinks Mirko is here in the spring. I've honestly forgotten. I, I think so. Evan Pryor also the um, another this past week to shed their black stripe. Yeah, uh, Evan Pryor is getting overlooked because the running back room is incredibly crowded. Because Henderson has such, had such an amazing spring and fall camp. Um, Evan Pryor also came in in the spring. Again, he's 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 being a bit overlooked. And, you know, I'm not saying he makes some sort of huge impact this season. But uh, he will absolutely be one of your favorite Buckeyes before it's all said and done. Yep, yep. So that's it for the Black Stripes. I anticipate a bunch more this next week. I don't know. I, I'm wondering, Kyle. I'm wondering if they're trying to keep it a bit restrictive. Maybe they're trying to make it a little more difficult to get that black stripe off. Because I feel like in years past, and maybe I'm misremembering this, I feel like in years past, like those first couple weeks, a uh, couple weeks of camp, black stripes just mm -hmm. come flying off. And I feel like that's not happening right now. And maybe that's deliberate. Maybe they're just making it a little bit harder. Um, and I don't know, I think. It might be down in the questions, so I might not say this yet. Um, maybe it's not. I'm not sure. We have Quinn Ewers showing up in camp, I think, on Monday. That's the latest I've heard. He'll be in on Monday, the day this episode is released. How long, he's officially, Kyle? He's, he's officially enrolled as of Thursday. He's enrolled at Ohio State. Yeah, he, and Thursday. he's already been like at the Woody Hayes and all of that, but he hasn't been on like on the field practicing yet. I believe that's supposed to happen on Monday. That's the last I've heard. I could be mistaken. But at the last I heard, I believe it's supposed to be Monday. He'll actually be on the field. How long does it take to lose that black stripe, Kyle? I will say... I'll say the week of Minnesota. Ooh, okay, okay. I'm going to go under that. So but I'm going to go... But I think that's... Yeah. I'm going to go under or before. How, how does under, over, under, before that? Not over or under, let's just go before that. Okay, All right. All right. Uh, says so he's that... going to be there Monday morning at 5 a.m. to meet with Coach Mick. Uh, and he, by the way, is going after, which we're also calling over. So, so I mean, I mean, the big, that, the big thing is the, ta the talents there. We, we see, we've seen we, we've seen it all from him, but it's got to know the playbook. It's got to know the personnel. 
the players on there too. And and how well he's able to pick up the playbook. Like, Mm -hmm. how do you prove yourself? Because how do you get on the field right now? You're, You're showing up behind three incredibly talented quarterbacks. Now, if we're talking raw talent, you might be the most talented. But you're still the new guy in the room. Because Kyle McCord, also a very highly rated five star. CJ Stroud, a like he's a four star, but just like this far away from a five star. Jack Miller, incredibly highly rated four star guy Um, of the four. He's the least highly rated, but still really highly rated. How do you get on the field? How do you prove yourself to lose that black stripe? You got to You got to hit the, um, you got to hit the film. I guess in the playbook, I guess that, that's, that's where you start. All right. Um, so Kyle, let's, let's just go straight from that into the quarterback battles. Yep. Yep. Uh, we're going into our player updates. So we'll talk about the quarterback here. Uh, it's it's clear right now who the the starter is here, allegedly. Allegedly, uh, C.J. Stroud. A lot not of, surprisingly. Lo- not not surprisingly, he looking really good per reports. Uh, had a really good scrimmage on Saturday. Look, and looks to be the guy now. Yeah, and not only is he the guy, the battle at this point is no longer for one. I, I don't believe I believe the battle is now who's the number two quarterback. And. Between uh, essentially between Miller and McCord. And so yeah, to and me, that's actually the battle to watch at this point. Who is the backup quarterback? Because if you're if you're Jack Miller. If you're the number three quarterback behind a true freshman. With a, the guy who's allegedly the next pick, pick your legend. You know what I mean? Your your next your your next Trevor Lawrence. Your next. Um, I can't think of his name, Kyle. I wanted to uh, from Stanford, from Indianapolis. Why why am I blanking on his name? I kept thinking Terrell Pryor, but no, not Terrell Pryor. No, 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 no. Uh, but you, but you understand what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, 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 it's gonna bug me. I need to move forward, but I can't believe I can't <laughs> think of his name. <laughs> anyway, we're moving forward. Um, I'm still thinking about it. I can't stop. I need to move forward. So quarterback battle continues. So Jack Miller at that point, like I expect him to stay for the entire season. Don't get me wrong, but with what we're hearing. It sounds pretty obvious to me that by the time next spring camp rolls around, I think Miller's probably going to be fourth on that depth chart and probably looking to go elsewhere. Um, and that's I, I hate I don't, we don't like talking about transfers and all of that, but sometimes the writing's just on the wall, especially for a quarterback where you can only start one. It's not like wide receiver where you can put three, four, five of them on the field at the same time. You can only start one. Andrew Luck. Yep, yep. Mm, I was about I was about to put in some, something about a luck in there to see if that ring a bell. But I'll stop we, a, stop acting like you knew. Stop <laughs> acting like you knew. If you knew, uh, you would have helped play, me. Unless we're playing, unless we're playing the um the wishbone here. Yeah, only only one. We're only going to see one running back, if that, on the field. Yeah, uh, same with the running back. I, I don't I don't envision a lot of double. A lot of double running backs. So, Kyle, who do you feel like is maybe uh, RB1 as of Saturday, August 14th? As of August 14th here? I think you got I think you got to go with um, got to go with Mayan Williams here. I, I have to think it's Mayan Williams um, reports out of camp. What I'm hearing right now is essentially Mayan Williams is probably going to be keeping the seat warm until they're comfortable putting Henderson in. Is kind of what I'm hearing right now. So maybe 
I kept saying, by the end of the year, maybe we see Henderson start. By the end of the year, maybe we hear Henderson start. At the beginning of the year, it's absolutely going to be Master Teague. By the end of the year, but now I'm starting, now I'm, I'm moving my projections around. Now I'm thinking it's mine, Williams, it's mine, Williams, it's mine, Williams. But Henderson <laughs> starting by, I mean, I, I get like Minnesota not counting in this equation. The start of Big Ten season what we would have traditionally called Big Ten season in the past before they started doing this week one opener thing. Yeah. I mean, reports coming that about Mayan Williams just looking in great shape right now, hard to take down, finding, just finding that extra yardage um, and off of, out of every play. So that's always something that, you know, a lot of Buckeye fans is hoping to see from a running back. Uh, uh, I love Master Teague. I, I don't yeah. want to, I don't want to um, downplay Master Teague or say anything bad about him, but one of the thoughts that Master Teague has had is that he never falls forward. And that seems to kind of be the thing with Mayan Williams. Seems to get find something out of nothing. Yeah. Um, has great, great feet, um, um, great feet power. Uh, just seems to be the running back as of right now. Some running backs, when there's nothing there, get one yard. And some running backs, where there's nothing there, gets three yards. Yep. And to me, that might be the difference when it comes to Mayan Williams over um, Master Teague. Mm -hmm. yep. Is getting three yards when there's nothing there versus one yard, which is, it sounds like nothing, but... Second and seven, second and six is a hell of a lot better than second and 10, second and nine. It's yeah. just a hell of a lot easier to call plays when you're ahead of the sticks. Absolutely. Uh, probably one of the By hot the way, topics. Just, Kyle, while, before we move on from running backs, um, question in our live chat. Um, could you see some two running back sets for a triple option play? No, I think we're, we're we're past that. I don't think that's Ryan Day's. If, if it was still Urban Meyer, I would say maybe on as a trick play every once in a while. But I, I just think Ryan Day it seems to be very pro focused, like pro spread, whereas Meyer was a little bit more college spread. I think Day's a little bit more pro spread, which is I mean, look at their recruiting. Look at the quarterbacks that Ryan Day is recruiting versus the quarterbacks that Urban Meyer recruited. Yeah, they're all pro style quarterbacks. Ohio State has not brought in a dual threat quarterback in recruiting since. Is it? God, what was the last time Ohio State brought in a pro uh, uh, a dual quarterback? Is it Benson Braxton? No, 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 no. Um, no, it's it's definitely not been since Braxton, but it's it's been a while. Yeah, I think you're right, Gangland. Um, yeah, no, yeah. Tate Martell right. might be the last one. Um, Fields, I don't know. Field, I don't. I don't think Fields was listed as a pro style quarterback, even though he was very mobile. Of course, they actually didn't technically recruit him. Um, hey, we have a sun card in the chat. Um, but yeah, that's it there. It's just look, look at the quarterbacks that they're going after. Uh, okay, Kyle. Um, I'm sorry. Where were you transitioning when we were still like, <laughs> um, I was, backs? I was going to, uh, probably one of the most talked about players, uh, recently here. And that's arguably one of our favorite positions that in our discord, we always love to talk about. Is it Jared this year? The year of the tight end year of the tight end. Um, so what we're hearing right now is essentially that one of the reasons why Jeremy Rucker came back, a lot of people were expecting him to go pro. One of the reasons why he came back was to work on his blocking. Um, and that's apparently getting better, <laughs> better. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know about good. Yet, but that's oh, see, we just mentioned year of the tight end, and the chat starts, the chat starts going. 
Um, <laughs> oh, we have an Austin and a, and a uh, Brawley's been in the chat for a minute in the chat now. Um, yeah, I don't. It, it's getting better. Uh, apparently, you know, when they need a dedicated blocking tight end, that's when Kate Stover apparently comes into play. So we definitely have like two tight ends, one of them more a receiver, one of them more a blocker, Rucker and Stover. Um, but what you get with Rucker is versatility because so if you don't know, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and explain this maybe for some of our casuals out there. A offense puts in a specific package of players, right? And the defense gets to see what that package is. That's why you're not allowed to have like 12 or more men in the huddle. That's why that penalty exists. So the defense can say, okay, that's the package that the offense has in. And then they can put in a package to match it. That That's why those rules exist, right? What you get with a guy like Jeremy Rucker, and again, you could look at Florida last year and a guy like Kyle Pitts and how they're maybe doing. Uh, yes, uh, uh, you said ask Florida. I think you meant AKA Florida for all sec. Um, but yeah, what you're then getting is that versatility of is Rucker a tight end or is he a wide receiver? And that helps you hide the package a little bit more. Kind of in a same but different way that you would get out of guys like Curtis Samuel in the past because you didn't know if he was a running back or a wide receiver. Yeah. One, one of the things about Rucker and um, was that, and, and we saw it last year too, just how great of hands he has, how how great of a pass catching tight end he, he was last year. One of the things he really needed to work on this year to really elevate himself and be like the tight end or one of the top tight ends to be drafted next year is to improve on his blocking game and reports to be that, yeah, he's he's really improved on that. And if he really if he's really improved for what the reports have said, man, and having that kind of a tight end where you can either plug him in and you got six right on the line there, or you can go five wide. You 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 put the you put out that defense just on on their toes there because you don't know what kind of formation they're gonna line up as. And even if he's on the line, he's still a good wide receiver. Yep. Even if he's yeah. still yeah. But the point is, is that if you don't know if if you don't know if Ruckert's going to be out wide or inside, then you don't know if you need like a linebacker who's more comfortable playing in the box versus a corner or a safety who is more comfortable playing out in space. So it creates yep. matchup problems. Yep. Uh, so the last last person here we'll talk about Steel Chambers. Steel Chambers. Uh, one of many players who is um, moving positions here and um, reports doing reports coming back saying that he's doing pretty well. Yeah. Uh, we're at the linebackers now. He could threaten for a starting spot and he's absolutely threatening for rotation. Um, he's probably in the two deep right now. Is, is essentially where I think steel chambers is at um, one of a few guys who made position switches um, you saw Steel Chambers. He's moved to linebacker. A lot of people thought he should have been recruited as a linebacker, and it's starting to show. Again, like if there's an injury or later in games, or maybe even as the season progresses, we could see him get more and more snaps at linebacker. Um, we're also still seeing position switches along the offensive line. We talked about it in depth last week. So if you want to hear more about this, make sure to listen to last week's episode. It's it's the episode where the thumbnail on YouTube anyway, where the thumbnail is the entire offensive line. Um, if you go take a look at that uh, or go take a listen to that episode, we talk a lot about some of the position switches that happened along the offensive line. Um, we're hearing about. Um, yeah, a few, like I said, a few position switches happening. We already talked about Cade Stover, um, last on last week's episode, we talked a lot about, um, the defensive backs and how we've had some position switches there between linebacker and safety and safety and corner and wide receiver to corner. And, you know, so a lot of position switching happening, Kyle, which I feel like in the past, I feel like typically that's a red flag, right? Because typically when you hear that, it's like you have deficiencies in areas. 
But I feel like that's not what's happening at Ohio State right now. I feel like they're just trying to find a way to get super talented people on the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. All right. Um, last thing here about fall camp here. We've got, got to talk about injuries here and uh, one transfer. Uh, Ryan Jacoby transferring out at Ohio State after um, lose, losing that starting or losing that opportunity to be one of those guys or even get to see the field here. Yeah. He's going to take yeah. his talent um, elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no offense to Ryan Jacoby, um, but we've done a couple depth chart predictions and I don't, I don't know if we brought up his name. So this is not a surprise. Yep. I, I think I think he'll find he'll find a spot easily somewhere if it's in the Big Ten. I can maybe Rutgers. Rutgers seems to be a good good spot for for Rutgers, for Boston College, school. Cincinnati seem to be the places where uh, transfers tend to go. Yep, yep. All right, uh, injuries here. Um, uh, Brawley says the... he's a pit guy for sure. Maybe Brawley knows something we don't know. Hmm, maybe. Uh Unfortunate news, though, uh, Jalen Johnson out for the year with a torn ACL. Yeah, uh, young player. Uh, I don't know. He definitely was going to be in the depth chart this year. Wasn't going to be a starter. Um, but yeah, it's 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 um, still when you're talking about the the defensive back room, a room that Ohio State's definitely attempting to rebuild right now. Any lost opportunity is a lost opportunity. So, yeah, this it's just it's never good to lose a player out of a position group that you're really attempting to rebuild. Yep. And also, you hate to see a young guy with an ACL injury because these are like key developmental years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another person that some people have talked about online, but I don't think it's that big of an issue, though. Uh, Garrett Wilson was limited in practice and in scrimmage uh, this Saturday, uh, but all reports coming back saying he's healthy, no issues. It's just they're just limiting him on contact and plays. We've talked about this in the past. When you get an older player and it's weird that Garrett Wilson all of a sudden is qualifying as an older player, but where did the years go, right? Um, but when you talk about an older player who has seen the field a lot, who has seen a lot of practice reps, especially the position that's as deep as the wide receiver position, that you just say, oh, oh, Garrett Wilson, you you have an ingrown toenail? Eh, take the day off. Like, let the young guys go out there and get their reps. It's fine. Garrett Wilson knows what he's doing. Missing a couple spring practices here or there is not going. So it's it's sort of the opposite of what I was just talking about with Jalen Johnson, right? I said it sucks for a young guy to miss practice time because it's so key for development. Garrett Wilson, he can miss some practice time. He's no longer in that area where he absolutely needs every practice rep possible. So, yeah, so like I said, especially with the wide receivers being so deep. Yeah, let some young guys get some reps. Yep, absolutely. Um, I think that's it as far as news here. Uh, one more week down. We are how many days now? We are. Molly wants to let us know, by the way, that he hates Baker Mayfield. And so do I. As a Buckeye fan, I don't forget. I do not forget. <laughs> a lot of you we Browns fans have decided to forget what happened in the horseshoe. I don't. We are two and a half weeks now, Jared, from opening kickoff for the season. It's also weird that we're two and a half weeks out, uh, but that's what a Thursday kickoff will do for you, right? Yes. All right. All right. Anything else about spring camp here, or should we should we get to our ad break here? Uh, let's do our ad break. We still have conference realignment to talk about. All right. I'll I'll, I'll mix it up. I'll, I'll go ahead and lead us off here. I'll talk about the Mad, Mad Canadian Barbecue Company in our mid here. <laughs> um, Mad Canadian has been a um, been a sponsor of ours for a very long time, and I'm happy to that he still continues to be a sponsor here at the at the uh, Buckeye Sloopcast. Uh, mentioned some of the great seasonings at the top of the show. 
Um, let me go ahead and mention some of the, the box sets that they have um, over at their website, the madcanadianbbq.com. Uh, first one here is the whole hog. It's the whole hog. It's each seasoning that the Mad Canadian has. Um, the sweet heat, probably my favorite of, of the of the other uh, box sets here. Four Horsemen, Discord, Two Border, Old Fashioned. Get a little bit of sweet, you get a little bit of heat. What's not to like about that? Or if you're not sure what kind of seasoning to go with, do the Just Send It. It's, your, it's the most versatile seasoning. Has your S&P bud. Has your Sonoran heat. Has your Cajun. Has your smoked. Everything you need to get your barbecue right. Check out those and all the other great seasonings at themedcanadianbbq.com. Use that promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout. For 10% off your entire order, make any barbecue company where they have your butt covered. All right, I'm going to do a speed read. Check this out. Guys, at the Iron Bean Coffee Company, you can find the Fierce, which has a highly caffeinated dark roast coffee. You can find the Rage Against the Dying of the Light, uh, which is a medium roast coffee. The Ride or Die, which is another medium roast co uh, coffee. There's the Unicorn. Uh, which is a flavored coffee, but it's a mystery flavored coffee. That's a lot of fun. Uh, the drink from the skull of your enemy uh, is a dark roast. The cast iron might be my favorite uh, medium roast. Uh, the integrity, which like the Iron Bean Coffee Company is all about integrity. That's one of their dark roasts. Then you have what I call the Nordic Trio, the Thor, which is a medium dark roast. The Loki, which is a light roast. Uh, well, it's, excuse me, it's a medium light roast. Uh, then there's the Odin, which is a medium. Uh, no, I think that one's just a straight dark roast. Uh, the Fear No Evil, which is a dark, dark roast. That's a black roast coffee. Um, then there's the Rocco. And it's like, Jared, what, what's the Rocco in? Well, you get your choice. You can either do a medium roast or a dark roast. Um, and then you have a bunch of flavored coffees, including uh, blueberry, Irish cream. Uh, there's an Irish uh, uh, excuse me, just uh, there's a grog, a carrot cake, a mint chocolate chip, a vanilla buttercream, a velvet cake, a blueberry crumble, and a ginger snap. <sighs> you can find all of that and more at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, round two, Jared, of our season seven of conference realignment yes. talk. Kyle, are are you ready? Are you ready to are you ready to go multi screen here? Oh Should boy, we here it? we go. Here we go. We're going multi screen. Uh, we're doing this. All right, here we go. All right, Kyle. Uh, latest news: one uh, that uh, Kevin Warren's just like not in the picture anymore. No one likes him. Uh, we were ahead of the curve on that one. Uh, but apparently, like all of this is being led by Fox, all of this is being led by the school athletic directors and school presidents. Um, Kevin Warren's a lame duck. So a lot of people out there worried that, oh, no, we're in conference realignment season. How are we supposed to trust Kevin Warren? Kevin Warren's just sitting in a chair at the Big Ten office taking up space right now. Just letting you know that that's the reality of the situation. So, Kyle, one of the big news uh, pieces of news we've got recently, um, and this came uh, from Buckeye Scoop, essentially was suggesting that both Virginia and North Carolina have been looking into the legality of their grant of rights deal with the ACC. One of the things we talked about the last time we talked about conference realignment was essentially that because of the grant of rights deal, a.k.a. like the TV contract that the ACC has, that it was going to be practically impossible to steal anyone from the ACC. Apparently, North Carolina and Virginia have been looking into. They have lawyers, they have high priced lawyers, uh, I'm sure just from their alumni base alone. They could probably find some really nice lawyers. So, Kyle, let, we're going to have to do this quickly. We took an entire episode to do this last time. So. We're going to have to. I, I want to do something crazy. I'm just I'm just saying it. I want to do something crazy. 24 team. 24 team power two. 
I'm talking full blown rate. We're basically just cutting this down to the Big Ten and the SEC. So I think the first thing I need to do actually is maybe so you, got, so you got Disney versus Fox then. Yeah, essentially, this is I, I mean, no lie. That's exactly what this is. This is Disney versus Fox. Uh, we would all like to pretend like uh, these institutions are above such things. But the reality is the reality is the reality. What if you hate them both, says Gangland? Uh, well, that's fine. I We're, we're not about. To take that, that's not what we're doing here. Um, oh, I'm I'm really failing from an arts and crafts standpoint at the moment. Uh, it's okay. I can't I can't see right now, so I'm just going. Well, to yeah, but everybody this. else can. I know. God, Kyle, this isn't just about you. Jeez, it's not MS Paint. It's Inkscape. Thank you very much, Gangland. <laughs> How dare you? You think I use MS Paint? I'm an IT engineer, for God's sakes. <laughs> uh, 24, 24 teams. That, that seems like a lot. Last time that we talked, it 20 seemed like like the max. Yeah. So, so what makes you think 24? Because we're now talking about a power two instead of a power three. Basically, we went from a power seven back when the Big East was still a thing, maybe a power six back when the Big East was still a thing. Then we moved that down to a power five. Uh, the last time we talked about conference realignment, we talked about a power three. But if we're really talking about, again, ESPN versus Fox, and by the way, um, I know a lot of people out there are like, but Jared, uh, Disney bought Fox. That's the same thing. No, they did not buy Fox Sports. Fox Sports is still with the company that was Fox before. It's complicated. Trust me. <laughs> Disney bought a lot of Fox properties. Not included in that was Fox Sports. So Fox Sports, like FS1, FS2, the Big Ten Network, stuff like that, was not bought by Disney. And therefore not under the same corporate umbrella as as. ESPN you, and ABC. If we're going to go to a a two conference league, yeah. it's going to be a league. Yeah, you, you pretty like the play the the playoffs as it is right now is pretty much done for. You're pretty much going to have to go into like a some sort of playoff like the NFL does that every other professional sports does. Then, yeah. Or for that matter, you just go back to one versus two, or. Actually, it's still a four-team playoff. It's just Big Ten Conference Championship produces a champion. SEC Conference Championship produces a champion. Those two play. Yes. Or you can have maybe a few games beforehand leading up to the Conference Championship game, which, again, just like the NFL, you have the Conference Championship, AFC and NFC. It, it's essentially the same thing too. Where the SEC can determine their own champion, however the hell they see fit. The Big Ten can determine their champion, however the hell they see fit. And then those two teams play each other. But I'm telling you right now, all we had talks during the summer about like a a 12 team playoff. All that shit's on pause right now. That's Lost appetite is the report I keep seeing is that the appetite for a 12 team playoff has waned. Uh, I think everyone's just sort of waiting to see what happens with conference realignment. But Kyle, let's let's get to this. Let, let's talk about conference realignment and let's put everyone into the Big Ten and the SEC who the Big Ten and the SEC would actually pursue. So, Kyle, we talked about North Carolina. And we talked about. Virginia. Mm -hmm. Those two schools make sense from what the Big Ten as a conference yeah. stands for. Absolutely. Uh, makes perfect makes perfect sense. These are two of the premier academic institutions in the country. Um, they both expand, but do not move too far out of the existing Big Ten footprint. This is further establishing them as like the conference of the North. 
that's pretty much what I can see this. You got almost like, almost kind of like a hill. If you look at the United States, almost kind of like a hill where you maybe go down to North Carolina, kind kind of go up over to Oklahoma and then back down all the way down to California. Everything that North would be the new big conference. Of course, if we're talking about like the North, some of the exceptions to this might be uh, Los Angeles. Um, as we move the University of Southern California into the Big Ten. And I'm going to go ahead and also move Oregon into the Big Ten. So if the ACC gets raided and if the ACC starts to fall apart, Kyle, is it acceptable then to maybe take Clemson and Florida State and move those guys into the SEC? Absolutely. Yes. So we're going to do that. Uh, Let's see. This graphic also does not have Oklahoma or Texas in the SEC yet. Uh, Because they aren't officially in the SEC yet, but we all know where that's going. Uh, Does the ACC get Arizona and ASU, Gangland asks. These are great questions. I don't know. Uh, I, I think that Arizona, maybe I don't know about Arizona State, but Arizona, huge alumni base, lots of money, AAU member. They fit a Big Ten profile. Also, like they're not the best at football. So fits a great Big Ten profile. As Brawley just said, uh, the Big Ten gets AAU schools. SEC gets everyone else. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that that kind of sums it up. Yep. Uh, Speaking of which, um, Kyle, so here we here we are. I I don't. This is this is getting wild. It's getting real wild. Um, I'm just going to ignore the American Conference for now. I don't think anyone there ends up in the SEC and I'm not we're not going to try and flesh out where everyone else goes. We're going to ignore them for now. Um, I think we need to seriously look at Colorado. And Arizona as Big Ten members. Yeah. Gangland brings up uh, a good point here. What about Notre Dame? Uh, this is a fantastic question. Um, but let, let's be honest. If it comes down to independence versus Big Ten versus SEC, where do they go? Because Notre Dame's an amazing academic institution. They're already sort of a part of the Big Ten with their hockey team. I I gotta think, I gotta think that if the ACC were to completely fall apart, and if you remove North Carolina, Clemson, Florida State, Virginia from that conference, we're talking about a wholesale just disaster. I gotta think they go to the Big Ten. I can't see Notre Dame in the SEC. I I just can't see it. I see them going independent and remaining independent before I see them going to the SEC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could see them going back to independent just because that's how Notre Dame rolls. Which can make it which can make things very difficult for them to try to schedule in the future, especially if the the power two conferences were to have some sort of agreement saying, yep, we're only playing just within our own conferences all year because they've got enough, got enough schools to go around to play each other for 10, 12 games, whatever it ends up being. Notre Dame could be pretty much saying, Hey, if you want to be competing for championships, you got to choose one of these two conferences. Okay, Kyle, I've, I've been hearing that UCLA is maybe a bit hesitant um, about joining the Big Ten. So yep. 
Let's take USC and Cal and ignore them for the sake of this episode. We have Washington State, that's not happening. Oregon State, that's not happening. Arizona State is an outside possibility. I've just heard Stanford seems to make sense from a lot of, but I've just, I've not heard about it. So I'm not going to do that. Um, Utah and Washington, do you want to place either of them in the Big Ten? Utah or Washington? Oh, I could see the Huskies. Yeah, I could see the Huskies. Yes, I could see them. Let's let's go ahead and move Washington into the Big Ten. All right. So how, how many is that now? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. That's eighteen. Eighteen. So if you're if you're thinking twenty four, that you got to think of six more here, Jared. Oh, I'm not done yet, buddy. I'm not All done right. yet. We we still have a whole ACC. <laughs> Kyle, I'm I'm name some ACC teams for you. Let me know what you think. Right. Pitt, Georgia Tech, Louisville, Boston College, Syracuse, Miami, Duke, Wake Forest, NC State, Virginia Tech. Where where are we placing these teams? Hmm. I I know I know for a fact that Penn State would not be happy about it. But it makes a lot of sense for the Big Ten. Great academic, great research. Doesn't expand the footprint, doesn't deliver TV markets because you kind of figure maybe Penn State's already doing that. Well, th- think about this. I mean, obviously not so much in football, but I know I know this whole change is because of football, but Duke, basketball. I, I just don't see it, man. I just don't see you, it. You, you put you put UNC and Gang, Duke Gangland, back together. By the way, says Pitt, Georgia Tech, and Duke. Uh, all. Do you want to do it? I I think I think Duke would be amazing from from. North Carolina wants what, what, what the, what the Big Ten, way. what the Big Ten's trying to do, and going after AAU schools. Duke makes sense. I mean, you got UNC. You put Duke there, kind of a combined. I can, I could see that. I could see that. Oh man, I'm really struggling here uh, with the art. <laughs> All right, Kyle, uh, how do you feel about Louisville, Boston College, Syracuse, Miami, Wake Forest? <laughs> you said Miami. I did say Miami. <laughs> Wake Forest, um, NC State, and Virginia Tech. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I'm having to go back and forth between uh, these schools on which ones are in the AAU and which ones aren't. Uh, uh, yeah, that, yeah, Miami. Miami going to the SEC makes a lot of sense to me. Um, what about Boston College? I don't know anything about Boston College. If I'm being super honest with you, it, I think the only the only real prize left in there that I'm seeing is Virginia Tech, and I don't even know how big of a prize they still are. Correct. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean if, still... you, if you if you if you if you grab Virginia, North Carolina, Duke, and let's just say Georgia Tech, let's just say you got those four coming in, then you grab and then you grab another four from the the Pac-12. Then you're up to what is that? Twenty-two. So I know we have some. You you want to throw Cal and UCLA in the Big Ten? Let's just throw those in. I just, I just think when it come when it's said and done, I think you're going to see more Pac-12 teams coming over. So yeah, let's throw those two in. All right, we only so for if the goal is 24 teams, that puts us at 23. Who are we missing? I th- um, I don't know. I, Did I don't you have know. Georgia Tech or no? I had uh, Georgia Tech's in there. I just know I have a five by four grid. Um, which equals 20 and then three additional teams. So that's 23. 
Who from the ACC do you have? Uh, Duke, Notre Dame, Virginia, North Carolina, Pitt, okay. Georgia Tech. Uh, from the Pac-12, I have Colorado, Washington, USC, Cal, UCLA, and Oregon. Okay. Kyle, we still have the Big 12, which we haven't even touched yet. Are there any prizes left in the Big 12? Could you see TCU in the SEC? I could see TCU in the SEC. Absolutely. Yeah, let's make this happen. Oh, man. Why not Why not have somebody it, close to Nebraska there? Why not Kansas for the Big Ten? Well, I was going to say Iowa State. Iowa State, too. I could say Iowa State or Kansas. I, I, I prefer, also Iowa, prefer State. Iowa State. I agree with you, gangland. I also prefer Iowa State. We, so, Kyle, we, that's the we, big we, ten. We love, we love, we love, we love those. Um, <laughs> we love those uh, weathered themed teams, right, gangland? All right, Kyle. That is the Big Ten at twenty-four teams. Um, we are severely lacking severely lacking uh, getting the SEC to 24 teams. So right. if this is what we're actually going for, uh, let's see, I, I currently have them at four by five. So we need four additional teams in the SEC. How do you feel about Arizona State? Oklahoma State? Virginia Tech and Kansas. Uh, West Virginia still out there. Baylor still out there. Utah, Stanford, Washington State, Oregon State. I, I I feel I feel that I know you mentioned West West Virginia. I feel like West Virginia is. I don't think they're going to get in on either of these schools. Or either of these conferences. I, I wouldn't say no to West Virginia. West Virginia's out. I didn't even mention Texas Tech or Baylor. I don't or Kansas State. I'm not interested in any of those schools. Um Kansas and Oklahoma I, State. I, I, honestly, I honestly think that SEC could just raid all over Texas. So just start naming Texas schools. Texas Tech, Baylor are the two left on the board, but why? You already have TCU, Texas Tech, and Texas. Why? I see no value in also picking up Texas Tech, Baylor. And then, and then add in Oklahoma Baylor. State as well. That way you got that. Oklahoma State, I could see. Oklahoma State is at least. Yeah, no one wants anything to do with Baylor gangland. Yeah. Um, All right. So what is that? So if you if you add all of those, then wh all wh of where are we at? I what do you mean all of those? <laughs> so right now. So the SEC, so got, as I have them in the graphic right now, yeah, is the current SEC yep. plus Clemson plus Florida State plus TCU plus Miami. That's put them at exactly 20. So to get them to 24, we need four more teams. Okay. okay. So let's so let's put in Oklahoma State. I agree. Let's put in TCU. I already did that. I don't know if I okay. said that, but I did that already. Okay. Um let's put in here are some of the teams left let's, that let's, they think are let's most let's likely. Put in, let's put in Kansas. Okay. I put agree. in Kansas. Um, By the way, if we're only having two conferences, like, I think, does this make basketball actually a part of the conversation? If there's I, only I two conferences. I don't even want to think about, we're just thinking football right now. <laughs> well, we're not, well, we're not just thinking football. We're talking about a realistic scenario that involves yeah. mostly, if we're being honest, mostly money. Still out there currently, Syracuse, Wake Forest, NC State, 
Virginia Tech, Louisville, Boston College, Utah, Stanford, Washington State, Arizona State, Oregon State, Kansas, West Virginia, TCU, Baylor, BYU, Boise, Appy, I don't even know why I have Appy on the graphic, Army, and then the entire American Conference. Kyle, Houston, Tulsa, Memphis, Cincinnati. Why don't you put in Arizona State in there? I think that is a legitimate contender for sure. Okay. One more to get the 24, Kyle. One more. You wanted to get a bunch of those Texas teams in there. Houston's still out there. Uh, We have Tulsa. We have UCF if you want to get another Florida team for the SEC. Um, Boston College. Uh, Virginia Tech. So I don't know. Um, maybe the most attractive piece is still out there. NC State, Virginia Tech, West Virginia, Utah, Stanford. Man, it's just kind of funny thinking like if let's just hypothetically got Duke and UNC going to the big, and then NC State going to the SEC. Think of like how close <laughs> that you, would be. That this, you now live in the battleground. <laughs> That's where the yes. border's been drawn. Yes, that is the border. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. No, I don't know. I, no, no, absolutely not. Cincinnati will never, ever, ever be in the Big Ten. Financial Ohio State wouldn't allow it. They're not there from an academic or research or financial standpoint no cincinnati no way in the big 10 ever so why don't you why don't you i'm not 100 let's just let's just just say say this real quick because i know i put that aau re uh rule out there um i'm not sure if duke is in the a is in the um aau or not they are Uh, they are or is that what you're saying They are Notre Dame, by the way, is not. And I've I've said for a long time, Mm. if the Big Ten was ever going to make an exception for their AAU rule, it would be for Notre Dame. (laughs) So I'm I'm consistent. They would break their AE, their AAU rule for Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. So to end to end this conversation here, let's. I need one more West Virginia. I tell you what, choose between Utah, West Virginia, Virginia Tech, BYU. Let's do BYU. Really? All right. Oh, no. I don't know. All don't right. Know. That's not what I would I have know. picked, but screw it. Let's have some fun. I think I would have gone Virginia Tech personally. But hey, we're having fun here. Screw it. <laughs> All right, that's our updated list. Look yeah, at that pretty let's, list there. Let's let's zoom in. <laughs> Kyle, we have a power two. I also want to state that, like, I think Yahoo or someone put out a thing talking about a merger of the ACC, the Pac-12, and the Big Ten. No, this is the Big Ten buying these teams let's just be very clear this is not a merger they might even call it a merger they might say that hey we're merging but guess what no big 10 teams will be left behind teams from the pac-12 and the acc will be left behind so make no mistake no matter what they call it in the press no matter how they spin it this is not a merger period Again, they might call it that. They might try and justify it and say it. And I, I've been a part of a, I've been a part of a big company that bought small companies and called these things mergers when they weren't. I've also been the little fish in those situations in my real life, where I was a part of a smaller company that merged with a bigger company. But we all knew exactly what actually happened. The big fish ate the small fish. Mergers aren't 
hardly ever mergers. They are purchases that they try and save some face on and call mergers. It's not a merger, you guys. It's a purchase. All right. Let, let's move on to some Ask Sloopcast questions here, Jared. All right. All right. Uh, let's see here. Buckeye Esquire asks, is it the easiest is it the easiest way to keep the most QBs in the room for Ryan Day to be utterly ruthless in garbage time and let backup slash third string guy throw a lot? Um maybe. I mean, he has justification. Hey, I got young quarterbacks. I'm trying to um I also I don't I don't know if uh Ryan Day's ever been shy about running it up in the past, if we're being yeah. honest. So I say yeah. Yes, I'll say yes. I yeah. can see that. Uh Dinger asks, your thoughts on the job Coach Stud has done taking the line from frighteningly thin to the monster it is now. Uh Coach Stud is probably the weakest recruiter of the official Ohio state coaches, but he's an amazing developer of talent and the guys he brings in as plan B's work out a lot of the time. So maybe we should also take into consideration his talent evaluation standpoint. Uh, We we talk about like a lot of the other, other schools in the big 10, like Iowa, like, um, even Wisconsin were even Michigan state, not, not now, but in past right. where they brought in like three, four star borders and they end up being like studs. Yeah. I look at Minnesota. Minnesota has a great offensive Minnesota line. Minnesota too. Yeah. Same thing. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. They don't here. always make them but, fast in the big 10 in the Midwest, but we, we have our big boys. Mm-hmm. Uh, Buckeye Zach, do you think we will see many sets using Rucker as a decoy in the slot with the offensive line? Well, the offensive line up with only one tight end, or could we see two or possibly three? Is this season truly going to be the year of the tight end? Uh, will it be the year of the tight end or not? I'm, I'm not sure. But... Um, Will it be I, I my my biggest except my, my biggest issue with this question is that if Ruckert's out in the slot, it's not as a decoy. That That's my biggest issue here. Will you see Ruckert out in the slot a lot this year? Yes. Is he going to be a decoy? No, no, he's he's a legitimate pass catching threat. Will mm-hmm. you see some yep. two tight end packages? Yeah, it'll happen. Um, It'll happen situationally. It might even happen in the middle of the field every once in a while, but I don't outside of like specific situations, short yardage plays being the most obvious. I don't see it happening a ton. Yep. Uh, Let's see. Nomad asks, is it September yet? Not quite uh, an actual question. Uh, should out of bounds hits and after the pl- play hits calls only be a penalty if it is flagrant? No. No, because then I, I don't want I don't want the referees trying to determine if it happened on purpose or not. That's just not a thing I want referees. That's the more the more they can have rules that are black and white without judgment calls, the better. I'm all for um, robot refs. I'm, 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 I'm mostly pro pro um, artificial intelligence. Like I, I would elect a robot as, as president of these United States. Mm-hmm. And I'm not even joking. I would absolutely do that. I don't think it's right, constitutional, well, but I'd do it. What, one one last question here. Uh, Buckeye Zach asks, is it wise to have Munford start in the interior of that offensive line rather than his traditional spot on the outside as a tackle? Say it again. Is it wise to have Munford start in the interior of the offensive line when his traditional spot is is the tackle position? I'm going to just trust, trust the coaches on this and trust Mumford on this. 
if everyone thinks that's the best thing to do, I'm just well, the the one of the best things about being an Ohio State fan in the year 2021 versus being a Michigan fan in the 2021 is that when you hear something shocking, which like moving Munford, who is an all American left tackle, moving Munford away from tackle into guard. If this was Michigan, I'd be like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Mm -hmm. But since it's Ohio State and I trust the coaches and I trust Munford and I trust the decision makers in place, I'd be like, well, it's probably for the best. It's nice when you get to trust your coaches. Yep. And, si and since Sunt Card's in the, um, in the studio right now, um, weather talk, Jared. <laughs> okay. It's been hot as hell. It has here. been. I know it's Sun Guard um, up where, where he's at. It's pretty hot as well. Hopefully we get some cool weather here soon. Um, and some rain. We need some rain here. Oh, here's a weird one from Buckeye Esquire. With conference expansion scheduling talks uh, starting to mirror World War II style alliances. I have no idea where this is going. Uh, he says the Big Ten is America. The Pac-12 is Great Britain. The ACC is Russia. OK. Who will be the SEC's Italy? <laughs> uh, the Sun the Belt. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> the Sun Belt. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's the Big 12, right? Because <laughs> like you, you, you plucked out like what are basically the only two good pieces left in the Big 12 after Colorado mm -hmm. and Nebraska left. There's basically like two great pieces left. You've already <laughs> plucked them out. Uh. Um, so I guess if Italy's anyone, it's the Big 12. But I think Mussolini's already hanging from the SS gas station at this point. <laughs> All right, let's let's end this episode before it gets too wild now. <laughs> I, I literally just talked about the assassination of a <laughs> leader of a nation. Yes, let, let's 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 <laughs> let, let's end this episode, Jerry, before it gets any worse. <laughs> it's a double IPA, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Germany? The SEC is Germany in this equation. Yes. And by the way, I just I don't agree with the question in general because it's it's not what's happening, because essentially we're not talking about allies. We're talking about big fishes eating small fishes. It's takeovers. Yeah. If there is an actual analogy to be had here, it would essentially be like the USSR. Like Cold War style versus NATO. Mm -hmm. I think if you're looking for a historical. Or maybe like everyone against Napoleon. I don't know. I just I, d I don't agree with the World War II analogy. All right. All right. Go ahead go and uh, end us off here, Jared. Good guys is a relative term. Uh, <laughs> they were also doing some terrible things, gang. <laughs> but they were on our side. <laughs> yeah, but we don't need to get into that right now. But yeah. All right, we're, we're definitely moving on now. We're definitely moving on now. Um, Kyle, that ends today's episode. Everyone make sure to check out thesloopcast.com. Uh, there you can find lots of merchandise. Kyle and I are both wearing Sloopcast merch right now. Um, Kyle, are, is that t-shirt currently available in the in our store? Because um, I think even though it has, it doesn't say the words Ohio State on it or football on it, it does say the word Buckeye on it, but they don't own the damn trees. I think Ohio State basically filed uh, copyright on the shirt Kyle's currently wearing. So I don't know if that one's available, but the one I'm wearing absolutely is. So you can definitely buy that one. Um, if you want to buy if you want to buy some merchandise, but that does not necessarily like look like it came from a podcast, you can check out our 7071 store, which has just like a bunch of Ohio stuff on it. And you can you can go check that out. Nope. Um, not not there. This yeah. one, the one I'm wearing, I do not believe is here. I am 
which just goes to show you if there's a t-shirt that we have that you like, you should probably buy it now before Ohio State decides it's theirs. Dicks. We have our we have our um the Sloopcast SC t-shirt still out there. Then and by the way, that one's like our mo- and it's of the crew, not of Ohio State, but that's maybe our most egregious copyright infringement. And it's still up there. And we still have the TMNT one up there too, which I enjoy. I had to get that one put back on. Ohio State claimed that one once already. And I just reposted it and they haven't taken it back down since. Anyway. Yeah, check, check them out. Some, some good shirts up, up there. All right. Yeah, go ahead and check all of that out. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, since, since preseason started here with the NFL, just want to mention a couple of the uh, former Buckeye quarterbacks here. Haskins with the Steelers now looked pretty good with the Steelers there. Um, threw for over 160 yards and a touchdown in his first season preseason with the Steelers. So he's clearly of the quarterbacks who have played for the Steelers. And Roethlisberger has not played this preseason of the quarterbacks who have played this. He's clearly the best one, in my opinion. I, I think Rudolph is a third NFL third stringer at best. I do not think he's any damn good. Mm -hmm. I think Haskins is the clear number two and probably the future of the Steelers. He just needs to get his head right. And early on in his tenure at Pittsburgh, it looks like he is getting his head right. Yep. And, and also Justin Fields, Justin Fields looking great with the bears. He had three touchdowns over 150 yards in his first preseason debut. I've had a couple Bears fans who are in my life. My brother, uh, who's a Bears fan, a couple people in our Discord server who are Bears fans. They've all said the same thing to me, which is he's starting by week three or four. Or was it four or five? Let's just say over under four is basically like the line I'm getting from Bears fans. They, they essentially say to me by week four or five Mm -hmm. yeah good good to see a pair of uh, state quarterbacks doing well because i mean (laughs) we know that hasn't happened too often or at all really in the nfl gangland it it doesn't matter if dalton's any good or can or command the offense at all it's just about giving feel this the bears aren't going anywhere this season it doesn't matter it's all about putting fields in the This season for Chicago is 100% about setting up next year for Justin Fields, putting Justin Fields in the best possible place to achieve. Because if you can do that, if you can build this entire season around catering towards the development of Justin Fields, then the Bears can get out of this slump that they've been in since the 80s. That's not fair. They went to a Super Bowl at some point in like late 90s, early 2000s. One, like under Erlacher, in the 2000s, they, they went to a Super Bowl. So that that might be unfair to say. But my my point I still remains somewhat the same. All right. All right. That's it. That's right. it. We are, of course, way over on time. So let's end the episode. Yeah, just real quick. Suncard said it was 2003. Gangland says, yeah, they lost to Peyton Manning. So yeah, wasn't that there. the one where it just rained? It was just a. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, Devin Hitzer returned that kick return touchdown. That's right. Yep. 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 OK. All right. No, I did not catch the Field of Dreams game. I heard everyone say it was magical, but it's still just baseball. And it still had less views than the than the. um than the opening preseason game, NFL game. That's harsh. That's harsh. I'm sure the environment was great. I'm sure everything about it was great, but ultimately it's still baseball and whatever. Yep. All right. Take us away, Jared. All right. uh, Tonight's ending music will be by a band out of Cincinnati. Yeah. F you too, gangland. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Tonight's ending music will be by a band out of Cincinnati called Mother Folk. That is F-O-L-K for anyone who might be thinking I'm saying something else. 
um, that is Mother Folk. Uh, they're out of Cincinnati. They're sort of a rootsy, folky rock band. Uh, so uh, they're touring right now. Uh, they have some new music coming out. Um, so make sure to check them out on Bandcamp, on YouTube, Spotify, uh, Apple Music, wherever you find your music. Be sure to check them out. It is one word. Mother Folk, F-O-L-K. So make sure to check them out. Uh, so with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Mother Folk. Got to make sure you emphasize the oak. Yes. At the end. <laughs> Mother Folk. Folk. Yeah, I, I couldn't I couldn't hear the K sound there. <laughs> oh, noise gates. You gotta sit fast. Yep, the noise canceling kind of didn't work in your favor there. Yeah, that's fine. It, I for, for anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about. Kyle and I both have noise gates on the microphones, um, and essentially it keeps anything that there's like an AI program that essentially decides what is or isn't a human voice and filters out anything that isn't a human voice. Um, so that's, that's what we're talking about when we say noise gate. Yeah. Yep. All right. I don't think we have anything else, Jared. So let's, let's go ahead and get to our sponsors. I once again would like to thank Mother Folk for ending today's show. And I once again would like to thank uh, the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's show. Kyle, uh, we talked a bit. We talked a, I, not a bit. I, I went over all of the coffees last time. I went over all of them. Um, I talked about the cast iron maybe being my favorite coffee. Um, and it might be. Um, it gets its name because in the early days of the iron bean coffee company, they actually hand roasted the beans in an iron skillet. So that's where the name comes from. Um, it's extremely versatile, smooth, rich, and clean, full bodied, lower acidity, uh, coffee. Uh, the main tone is sort of a deep semi-sweet chocolatey smoke flavor, um, balanced with just a, just a hint of like a floral, um, it's a Honduran sweet balanced coffee bean notes of uh, kind of a spice note with a little bit of like of a black pepper, maybe a little bit of a caramel flavor in there as well. Now, if that one's not my favorite, and if you can't tell, I'm a bit of a medium roast guy. That's sort of my personal sweet spot. If that one's not my favorite, then maybe the ride or die is um, the ride or die um, is a gentle but distinctive version of the American uh, breakfast cup, uh, superb when drip brewed. Uh, and he, he recommends you drink this one black. Um, uh, it's a Brazilian yellow bourbon coffee bean, uh, with superb smoothness yet still flavorful, uh, hints of caramel, hazelnut, and sweet cream. So I think those three or, or excuse me, those two, are probably my favorite coffees that they have to offer. But again, I'm a little bit biased because I, I like medium roast so much. So if you're a dark roast guy or gal out there, uh, or some, or somewhere on the binary in between, we see you guys too. Uh, then, uh, they have lots of selections in the dark roast area. Uh, and you can find all of those and uh, some flavored coffees, a couple lighter roast coffees, uh, all of those can be found at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode was also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. I mentioned about who they were, some seasonings, some of their box sets. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about his food truck. Uh, yes, the Mad Canadian has a food truck. Uh, unfortunately, if you're not in the Ohio area, kind of um, SSO, 
or SSL. SSL. That's SSL. That, that was SLL. my um, IT. That that was that was my um IT coming out <laughs> out of there. Um, yeah, he has a shit out truck. of um, luck is what Kyle is attempting to say. <laughs> yes. Uh, words and episode go um yeah he has a he has a uh, food truck up mainly does northwest ohio sometimes go in the northern part of ohio but check check out where where he's at over at um, his facebook over at twitter just search for mad canadian bbq uh, i believe it's just tmc bbq on twitter and at the mad canadian bbq company on facebook he puts on there where he's going to be heading to next uh last weekend he was as well the, he was at the Tiffin Brewery. Um, based on the comments, looks like it was a really good um, showing there. Um, I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of um, shit out of luck because I'm here in North Carolina, so I don't I don't get to go see his um, his food truck. But check it out, um, great person and even better food that he has, or maybe the other way around. You you tell me. <laughs> the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Um, make sure make sure to check out the website. All the great seasonings. Use that promo code SLIPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. 